cocktails? Five. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Get to life advice here. Again, lifeadvicerr at gmail.com. Um, you know, could have a couple of issues here on the home front. I have my own little HOA battle. I'm not sure I'm quite willing to share it with everybody. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. I don't know how far I want to go to war on this HOA thing. Um, and then we have construction happening. And I guess there's all these community people that get together when there's construction in your neighborhood. Like if everybody's on top of each other, like they are where I live and phrasing, um, guys are hammering away at like 7 a.m. this morning. And I assume they're breaking some sort of rule. And I imagine somebody far more organized and bothered by it will get involved. Um, so maybe that just means I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not giving back to my community. I don't know. I don't know what that says about me, but you may hear it a little bit, uh, through some of the pods that may have to mean we have to, we have to change course here. Who knows? Uh, I've talked with Sir Rudy about it a little bit. I don't know how great I feel about renting a space at WeWork after we did that podcast about him. <laughs> I'm quite sure I'm going to get the discount. <laughs> so uh, there you go. All right. So we have a lot of different stuff here. Um, we had a guy email in. He goes, wife is 10. So if Kyle sends that one over. I go, okay, this is quite a dilemma. And it wasn't that at all. He goes, the country club, Randy Couture was the best 10 minutes of a podcast I've listened to in a while. I think we can still be better as a podcast, but people seem to really love that story. Uh, we just didn't, you know, if you missed that one, dude just went hammer fists on a guy and then has a hot wife. So let's, uh, let's get to a couple of these. Should I ask out my professor? All right. <laughs> guy checking in 26, three, one ninety. used to play D two hoops. Wasn't for me. I guess he transferred, man. Wasn't for you. He'd be on the bachelor, former professional basketball player. Like I had to retire. Retired as a sophomore in college? Yeah. Just injuries. All right. What's up, guys? Current dilemma is due to the fact that I'm approaching the end of my fall semester. I've had the same professor now for two different courses during the last two semesters. She's insanely uh, attractive, and we get along really well. It's a writing-based course, so I have gone to her office hours quite a bit for extra feedback on my work. All right. So just so we understand, office hours, not in her office for hours. That would probably be crossing over to a a danger zone or a lack of renewal. <laughs> you wouldn't need our advice if that was the case. <laughs> yeah, right. My buddies and I always joke around that I should ask her out even when I graduate. Um, it seems far-fetched in my mind. However, I have been proclaimed, quote, the love doctor by my roommates. Hmm. Note that, Kyle, so we get back to it. Um, so they believe it is possible she would accept. Things tend to be pretty easy with girls my age, even though I don't necessarily seem to be doing anything too crazy. This would obviously be out of my comfort zone, considering I deal with college girls that are extremely easy to read. This guy might, maybe he is the love doctor. He's just got everybody figured out. He just looks into their eyes. It's like, all right, read you. My professor seems to really enjoy me as well, but to believe there are any actual feelings there would seem like a stretch. Should I step out of my comfort level and go for it? Should I wait until I graduate? a year and a half from now, or should I leave it be? My buddies think I definitely should, as it would be just another encounter to add to my, quote, resume. Okay, this guy's, we got just a ton of guys. Ugh, a lot of these guys. <laughs> All right, here's, here's what I'm saying uh, on a couple of these things. If you hang out with a group of friends that call you the love doctor, I don't know. I don't know what your friend, like, is it funny? Are they serious about it? Do they really call you that all the time? Um, are you perhaps the guy that's way cooler than the rest of his friends? So it's actually a very supportive friendship group. But in any friendship group, there's usually a dynamic where somebody's kind of the the best at it. Like there's there's one uh, woman that I used to work with who I was convinced that only hung out with unattractive people so that she always looked 10 times more attractive. Mm. Like I was convinced like she could have been friends with anybody and she wasn't. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'm onto something here. I have a theory that I think this person only hangs out with unattractive people for this specific reason. I don't think that's necessarily what you're doing. D2 Hoops wasn't even for you. So <laughs> um, it's just something that the radar went off immediately, Kyle. Are you with me there? Because I, I think there's different dynamics where you probably have, Kyle, a friend group where you feel like you're the alpha, you're the best, the superior, you're cool to all of them. They build you up. And then I'm sure there's other circles where you've hung in being like, why is anybody even in this group talk to me? Yeah, I mean, I'm 
I'm definitely not the alpha in my circles. Uh, there's actually a couple guys. It's like, you know, I don't have any, I don't have any knowledge on what it's like to be in jail or anything like that, you know? So, I mean, I kind of defer. They'll just, they've lived more lives than me. I'd like to say I've done a lot of living, but um, they've just lived more of a life than me so far. But I know what you're saying. It sounds like this guy's probably the coolest guy in the AV club. All right. Okay. So, um, also, let's let's look at this from uh, an age perspective. If I'm in college and I thought a professor really was into me and she, everybody was like, that's the hottest professor ever and all that kind of stuff, I would process this a lot differently at 20 than I would now in my 40s. So you got to listen to that part of it. I may not be the right person to give you advice. Um, the reason she's probably really friendly with you, I mean, one, it could be that she's into you. Um, a more likely scenario could be that because there's no threat of her actually having to think of you as a dating <laughs> partner, that she's completely at, at comfort around you. She is really friendly. Like this isn't a bar. This isn't a wedding. This isn't a date. This isn't meeting somebody on an app. All of those barriers, those social barriers that we have that make some of these, uh, most of these occasions kind of awkward and kind of tough for everybody and people get anxiety about it. it. It's that now all of those are removed from this relationship. It's strictly you're the student and she's a professor. So she may be incredibly friendly to you because that's all it is. And she's just a really nice person and she's not thinking of you. There's no stress on this dynamic because none of that has even crossed her mind and it's not realistic. So you could be completely reading it wrong that way. Now, again, you know, some of you guys out there do exist. Uh, but I would, I mean, what's, what's the point? Do you like her? It doesn't, you, you haven't talked about like, Hey, I'm actually into her. It just seems that she's hot and your friends want you to do it. And if that's the case, then, um, I don't know. I mean, do you really, it would kind of suck to have somebody's professional career at a university destroyed because your buddies were like, do it. <laughs> um, most people will listen to that part of the advice and call me a loser, which I understand. Um, Prude. but if this were reversed, <laughs> if it were a, a male professor and it's a female student writing in being like, I want to ask out my male professor, like in that case, I couldn't even touch it. Like the only advice I could give you would be leave it alone, leave it alone. But we get weird when the roles are changed gender wise, where it's the female teacher. And then we kind of have like, I don't know, we, in a weird way, we have like way more fun with it. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess you could reach out if you wanted to kind of date her. But if you're sitting here just trying to sleep with your hot professor and you haven't even graduated yet, I mean, I guess you could make the joke of, hey, well, you know, once I graduate, I'm asking you out, whatever. And then, you know, how, however she reads it, she reads it. And that would probably give you a way out as if you didn't really do it, but you're trying to figure this out. And considering you can read minds, um, I'm sure you'll be able to process whatever reaction you get out of this. But just be careful that, you know, there's real things at stake here for somebody who's an actual professor, and this is their career. Um, and the other part would be, it could very well be, as I said before, her just being really great to be around, and she's not thinking of you as a potential partner whatsoever. So none of those stressors are involved. And so the normal shit you would see in the beginning as you're feeling each other out, courting each other, um, none of those exist here, because she may not even think of it. Kyle, do you have any hot teachers that liked you? Mm, not that liked me. I knew guys in high school that sealed the deal, and I knew guys in college that sealed the deal. I didn't find out about the high school guy till after. It was like his dirty little secret until everyone was out of the building. But um, I mean, so basically, what I'm saying is, stranger things have happened, and it's in uh, every t-shirt. Like it's usually gender roles are reversed. There's always a a guy who's uh, a, a professor at a college who's like you know hanging out too much with a girl. That's usually that. It's usually the other way around. But it sounds like he's probably hasn't met anyone in college that he's really liked. I mean, he opened with his resume, right? I mean, that's that's really what's going on here. And so I, I would say, A, stranger things have happened. B, you don't really care about any of this, it sounds like. And C, um, I don't know. I just I know for a fact that it, it, it does happen. So I don't know, dude. Maybe. I mean, because then where would you hang out, though, honestly? It's like you'd have to start slow. <laughs> and then what? She's going to be seen at a bar that near campus with you? No. Um, what are you going to bring a bottle of wine to her office after hours? Probably not. I mean, it just sounds it sounds like unless she's like coming over, which I can guarantee you that's not going to happen. I don't know how it works, but I mean, it sounds like you don't care about anything. It sounds like really you just want this story to live on for another 15 years. And, you know, I can't necessarily say there's something wrong with that. When you don't care about anything, just take a shot i guess i don't have too many thoughts the guys in high school thing you know that didn't happen at my high school but that to me like looking back on it is the most foreign it'd be like somebody being like wait you have a house in croatia like what <laughs> yeah like are dude you was serious six, four. dude was six four though 
No, this guy's six three, former D two. Um, no, a lot of that stuff is good, especially too. Like if you're in a college community on top of everything else, like if you can't, you can't actually really date here, which I don't think is really what you're going for. It always right. kind of it was always a weird dynamic too, because as I brought up numerous times, that age gap of of eighteen to twenty one feels like a decade plus. The age gap of twenty one, twenty two to like twenty six feels like another twenty years. But when you have younger people working at a university, depending on what kind of school you go to, like where I went to school, it was still a town. The university was inside of a town. And, you know, obviously we were out all the time. And I actually, towards the end of, yeah, we had to stay on campus until our sophomore year. Then it was up to us. And then right. nobody, nobody would stay on campus for junior year. And I was going to get kicked off. And it's because we'd had, all of us had had violations. We'd all rotate them. And I the reason I ended up getting put in review was <laughs> I seriously went to take a shower and one of the other idiot neighbors in my hall just went into my room. My room was the one that was always unlocked. We, we just, I don't know. We're looking back. Know we didn't well. care. Yeah. We were just unlocked, go in there, screw around, play video games, come back to your room, seven guys. None of them are your you know roommates. Yep. And a guy went in and turned on, um, check your head, beastie boys, cranked it all the way up and then left. Bounced. <laughs> and I'm coming out of the shower with a towel around me in the hallway. And I've got campus security outside of my door, banging on the door while the music is blaring. And they're like, is this your room? And I go, yeah. And they're like, what are you doing? It's the middle of the day. Are you kidding me? I go, I've been in the shower. Like, I didn't, I didn't do this. What are you talking about? And they're like, bullshit. They didn't believe me, which I guess no. I kind of understand why they didn't believe me. So the whole reason I bring up the story is they're like, hey, you're going to be in review now or whatever. And then we were out. I don't know, later that week. And we ran into the guy that was like in charge of going over campus violations. And he was 26, 27. And he's absolutely shit faced. And I just went up to him. I go, hey, man, I'm like kind of in this situation. And he's like, oh, I got it. No problem. <laughs> he goes, here, call me Monday. Done. He's like, you're not going anywhere. He was so aggressive. And then I, it was the weird thing was, is there was like an ex that lived literally across the hallway. And I went, you know what? Actually being forced to leave is going to be way better. So I went and lived off campus for like the last couple months that of that semester and would come back randomly to the dorm to grab stuff, even though I wasn't supposed to be there. So, so that um, was the RD, that guy, right? The resident director. Usually there's an RA, which is like the, the, the beat cops. And then there's the RD who's like the, the sergeant or something there. And it's usually like the oldest student on campus who stuck around for a year or two. Yeah, he was above. This guy was was a higher up. But again, he felt like he was 50 years old to us. Yeah. And so then same. we saw him at one of the bars. But one <laughs> of the bars that we would go to was like an adult thing. And then it would phase out the adults. And then we would just kind of take it over. And I'll, I'll never forget. Like, we thought it was so weird that the campus guy was out. And then when you think about it, you're like, well, of course he's out. Yeah, what's he going to do? It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's going out telling college kids he's going to take care of all their problems. So, yeah, he lives in the best dorm on campus with eating ramen noodles just like the rest of us. He doesn't even have a full kitchen in there. I didn't remember. Guy didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I stumbled across my old emails like way like I've had the same email address for a <laughs> shit ton of time. And I I stumbled across the ones I had to send like with the drafts in it to write all the essays for when I got my troubles. And there was like some of them was like, oh, you know, why you shouldn't smoke weed. The other ones was like, uh, I forget. There was like three of them. And I was like, wow, I had to write three essays before they really started ramping oh, okay. up the punishments. All right. Can you please, during One Life Advice, <laughs> read us your email on why you shouldn't smoke weed? I will. Uh, I will. I will. I will do that. I'll, right. I'll, I didn't open the thing. I just saw I saw the, the header and I was like, oh, I remember that. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that, Surdy? You ever have a <laughs> no, teacher in you? Yeah. I would just say, is there any chance, getting back to actually the story and the guy, is there any chance that this is like the guy at the strip club who thinks the dancers are into him? Like, ooh. Totally. Like, she's the teacher. Like, she's, it's her job to like, she, even if you're like, you know, maybe you're really into the class and she's pumped about that too and it's a safe space. I don't know. I would just be worried about that. Yeah, I do think you're blurring the lines of being a professor and a dancer. <laughs> where, you know, a professor like Hey, they're both you, helping people, you know? I, we, we yeah, I, I guess I've never really thought of, like, my professor's really nice. And then somebody would be like, dude, same thing with strippers, though. And I would go, what? <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's get to another one here. All right, paying for moving expenses. Former college wrestler. A lot of athletes today. Love can it. do pull-ups, and I work out at a lifetime athletic club. None of that matters, but felt necessary. Fair? My situation, in May, I moved back home to Iowa. Love the people of Iowa. 
for a work, uh, work opportunity after living in Virginia for a few years. My on and off girlfriend two plus years decided she wanted to come with, so we moved together. It didn't last long, and I broke up with her. Now she wants me to pay for her moving expenses back to Iowa. Not a huge deal, I thought. Then I learned it was three grand for a one-way U-Haul from Iowa to Virginia. Do I eat the 3 k to get rid of her and end on better terms or tell her to pay for her own truck as she's my ex now and I will likely never see her again? Thanks. All right. Um, you broke up with her, so that's the, the, the root of this entire transaction. Um, now, did you break up for a specific reason? Did you do something wrong? Did you just get sick of her? Did she maybe get sick of you and then you hit the button before she did? I mean, did this blindside her? If you blindsided her, you did something wrong. Uh, you're dealing with emotions here that are a little bit different than some sort of business transaction. I would also ask from Iowa to Virginia, if it's three grand for a U-Haul truck, um, not saying that that's wrong. You can do better than that. I move my stuff across the country in those pod things for way less than that. Way less. So You probably had more stuff. Yeah, I definitely had more stuff. So that that seems high. That seems that seems high. So maybe you could be like, look, I'm not paying three grand for a U-Haul truck, but I will, I will talk to you about maybe researching this a little bit more and paying a little <laughs> bit less. Like you said you were willing to, and then you got the number. So that tells me you know you kind of screwed this thing up. I mean, look, you could, could you could just tell her absolutely not, you're totally on your own, but it's just not going to be a lot of fun if she's heartbroken about this whole deal. So is it the end of the world if you kick a little bit more money in? No, but I mean, it kind of sounds like you give zero shits whatsoever. So I'm not going to tell you to pay for a bill that you don't want to. You said you're never going to talk to this person again on every top of everything else. But if you, I mean, you're phrasing it like she was like, hey, I want to come with you. And you were like, all right, cool. <laughs> so you didn't seem like you were that into it to begin with. And then you dump her. Um, I would think there's, I don't know what your age is. You didn't put your age in this whole thing. I think there's a certain age where you might feel like you have to help out a little bit, but the entire bill on this one, I think there's some wiggle room on this price. Totally. I think you should treat it exactly how my mom treated my school shopping. It was, you got uh, the budget was $60 for shoes, anything over you're going to have to cover. And cause she knows that we can go to pay less and get a great pair of shoes for $60. But if you want the air force ones, you're just going to have to do some chores or I don't know where you're going to get your money, kids strip some more copper wire, but you're going to have to do it. So that's what I think is you should just have a, a hard cap and don't really even negotiate it. Decide what you thought you were going to pay in the first place, because at the end of the day, as we know with moves and roommates and stuff, people get fucked over all the time. You're offering to do the opposite of fuck someone over and help them out. So just come up with what you're comfortable paying with and then put a cap on it. That's what I think. I, I just I feel like 50 50 is totally fair and shop around. But like she's an adult. She decided to make this decision for herself. I, you know, it's her life, too. Like she, you didn't force her to go out there with you. So I don't feel like it's all on you. And if you're not concerned about what the future of that relationship is, then I, I think 50 50 is fine. And then shop around. And if, it, if you get some fifteen hundred dollars, do that. But I don't think there's any way you should pay the entire thing just because she moved out there for you. Like she's an adult. She made that decision, too. Boom. Next one. Nothing to add. That's better. 50-50 is definitely better than a cap number. Good job. That's why there's three of us. Yeah. All right. Um, the last one. This one is titled, Kyle, rated PG-13. I'd love so, to know what that means. Well, it means it's going to get real adult here real But fast. not too adult. Yeah, but not too adult. Like Lord of the Rings fighting, not like Game of Thrones fighting. Like when Vince Vaughn and Swingers goes, you know, kind of that PG-13 <laughs> yeah. guy, we're kind of hoping it's going to happen, and we want the rated R guy. I think that's the line. I don't know if I'm getting that right. No, I, I, I got you. No, I got you. I'll get seven emails telling me how it was wrong. Okay, all right. New homeowner, PG-13. Let's see how, how randy this one gets. <laughs> Not sure how well it'll play for listeners. I want to change it up. I'm checking in with a Mario Kart online win percentage of 82%. Nice. That's um, a stat. All right. Anyway, I'm at my house a lot. I have a question regarding domestic privacy and living in a cul-de-sac as a newly married new homeowner. A bit about me. I've always been quite self-aware, uh, who hates inconveniencing others and does whatever it takes to be non-confrontational and stay out of everyone else's way. I hate rocking the boat. 
in awkward situ uh, awkward situations are not my forte. I just recently got married and moved out of my parents' home. Mm. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> either this guy is so young and just got married or he's old and just moved out so yeah i i gotta imagine some things are going off in my head here let's keep reading moved out of my parents home which had quite tight rules especially from a religious old school perspective nothing against it awesome parents and upbringing and i'm experiencing true freedom for the first time so my guess here is that you're young and, you know, because of your religious beliefs, you weren't going to live with somebody else. I've come across this. It's, it's not that rare. Maybe that's the case. We're talking religion sort of shaping the path of domestic freedom and marriage itself. So maybe you weren't even allowed to, like, live together or that kind of stuff. Or her parents felt the same way. I'm just trying to talk out loud so I can understand the entire thing. All right. When I say freedom, I mean things like walking, in the walking around the house clothesless, playing loud music staying up as late as i want and of course a newly married parents house escapee consummating my marriage on a regular basis i know i know it'll slow down i get it <laughs> all right so you're having sex all over your house and walking around new yeah <laughs> staying up real late sorry to feel like this guy's 16 or something but <laughs> i don't know what's happening right now <laughs> i'm also into pogs <laughs> i don't know if anyone will get the mario kart thing makes fact, more sense now yeah now the mario kart <laughs> yeah. thing yeah very good call saruti that's great great recall on that one um all right let's just imagine he's in his mid-20s because i'm having a hard time figuring this thing out our house we purchased is very open concept most of the new ones are uh almost entirely windows on all sides we're fairly close to the neighbors on two sides and a ways away from the neighbor behind us we tend to keep the blinds closed almost all the time on the two sides facing the side neighbors but the front facing the street and the back windows facing the next cul-de-sac over we typically leave open which leads to the meat of the email <laughs> a couple go. days ago <laughs> <I know. laughs> a neighbor was in my front yard important point here i think and caught a quite unfortunate glimpse while my wife and i were in the moment of vulnerability sex there was a brief, horrified pause before an awkward wave. You waved, and the blinds being pulled shut. Fortunately, this is one of the 30-year-old neighbors, as opposed to either uh, these young folks' kids or a nice grandma on the other side of it, but it's still not a great way to start up a relationship with our six-week new neighbors. So they've been there six weeks. In hindsight, the last six weeks have not been the most conscientious weeks of my life. And between my glass windows and my subwoofer, I might be turning into the neighbor that other folks complain Wait, about to what? the extended families around the Christmas table. I could be 100%, not that guy, I'm just not sure. I want to nip this in the bud, but I also like the ability to loudly listen to um, Evanescence and have spawn. Wow. What do you got there, Kyle? I'm just going to I'm gonna see where that band is dated. I mean, I know I heard it floating around, but I don't know if I've ever wore or uh, listened to a song. Right, okay. Wait, Evanescence? Now, yeah, Sir, do you got anything for us on that? Yeah, bring Rock me to life, band. dude. 95. Yeah. Found in 95, Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. All right. Genre is just straight up rock, it says. And Christian yeah. rock? <laughs> Saruti? You don't know Evanescence? I don't. You guys Bring don't. Me to Life? Bring Me to Life? Is that a song you've heard? Yeah, I wouldn't that know was the like... name. Is it, is it number two or seven? I, I'm, nobody knows the names of songs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Um, and have spontaneous adventures with my wife in more than one room of the house. Man, dudes are just, how about your Wednesday? All right, so I can't tell if I'm overthinking this or if the HOA is already putting together a proposal to have us thrown out of the community. Which do you think it is? And what do you think our approach should be to our previously discussed 30-year-old neighbors? Bake them cookies and address the elephant in the room or live and let live while trying to be as thoughtful as possible going forward? Thank you, sir, and all the best to you and the team. Okay. Uh, <laughs> First off, we sure that's real? <laughs> yeah, it could be fake. I think it's, it's real. I think it's real. The Mario Kart part is too specific to make me think that it's it's fake. You never know. I mean, the fake one's going to get through every now and then. I could just add something quick before we really try to figure this out. The subwoofer thing, I did it. Huge. Like, hey, do you want a six-inch sub? Nah, well, how much more is a 12-inch sub? And everyone in your apartment building hates your guts, okay? And yes, 
It's it's completely not necessary. I did it. How I don't know how many times I did it. I always got one. I had another one for a desktop, <laughs> and I couldn't even afford this shit at the time. But of course, I had to have it. And you know, I stuck one in the corner of a room, and I had I had people come down and be like, "What is going on?" Like they thought a, a plane had crashed in the building. And it's true because of, of an intense subwoofer. And again, this is a standalone home, so it's a little bit different. But they're kind of ridiculous. They are kind of ridiculous. I'm not trying to ruin the subwoofer um community here but i mean i think you get the point so if you're self-aware about the subwoofer so let's get back to you having sex with your wife in front of the neighbor and then waving at him and then so everybody knows what happened here i just don't think baking some products and going hey sorry you saw us banging <laughs> those are oatmeal raisin and those are peanut butter i i just i wouldn't <laughs> go that far with now i think you could probably do a better job of closing the blinds man i think you could probably stop as exciting as it is right now just making sure there's there's a just do a better job do a better job of concealing um all this alone time and that's kind of your fault because i don't think i mean look some people get off on this some people are into it some people like let you know what i mean it doesn't sound like that's what your deal is but i think you could just be a little bit better about this and uh, yeah they're probably talking about you you just been there six weeks this is another group of neighbors that have probably all been there for years. Uh, if there's kids running around, I don't know if anybody's going to call you on this. Like, this was your warning, and then you move on from it. I would let it die down. I wouldn't be addressing it. You don't live with these people. You live on a street with them. It's a completely different thing. And I would I would look at this as a warning and and tighten up, tighten up your operation a little bit more. But they're definitely talking about you. Yeah, that's not in your head. Yeah, I, th I, I think PG-13 was exactly right. Like, it was it's definitely uh, coming up on the line, and I would say, yeah, have been having, like, open intercourse uh, in front of your windows. But it sounds like you'd be, like, PG-13 level annoying is what I mean. Like, it's yeah, like if there's a there's R, and I think there's wow. NC-17. I don't know if that's maybe just a TV thing, but there's, like, you're not in the top level annoying, but you're definitely on the radar and um, definitely shouldn't have anybody, any kids running around your the front of your house it sounds like so I, I i would say it's just this is the case for parents to let kids stay out late and figure make their own mistakes early um but yeah you're right i think um yeah close the blinds and maybe just you know is, is, is the subwoofer outside i don't understand is he like running an extension cord onto the fucking porch and just like enjoying his um domain like what's going on I don't know, but I mean, a lot of this is making sense. This guy's been unleashed for the first time ever with a very tight upbringing, and I'm guessing probably mid twenties or something like that. So, I mean, imagine living at home and having these restrictions, and then now at like 25, and he's in a good enough space with his wife to be able to buy a home. You know, whatever. I don't no idea what the neighborhood is. We're not going to we're not going to start zillowing all this, but you get the point. Like, he's. I understand where he's coming from. If I'm even close on the age thing here. But, Dude, why didn't he send it? Everyone sends their age and their weight. This guy didn't send his age. Maybe that's it's why like it's the fake. most important part. Well, look, that when was the what was the peak of Evanescence out of Arkansas? Surreal? So that was like right when I was in. First off, the idea that you guys don't know who Evanescence is is ridiculous. They were They're huge when I was in high school. So that was like 05, 04 ish. I, was, I graduated in 06. Um, they were like a, I don't know, an emo rock band, I guess. And they had like oh, no one way. song. I can't so I believe it. Are there an emo rock band in 05? <laughs> yeah, you guys are freaking out that I don't know who they are? Okay, I guarantee you people on Twitter are going to be like, how the fuck do you guys not know who Evanescence hey, are? Hey, here's the thing. I think I know a lot about a lot of things. There's a couple things I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you got a couple blind spots. It's all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This reminds me, though, of, like, you know, like, the kid that you went to high school with that, like, his parents, probably this kid, you know, they were just overprotective. He didn't really get to do anything. They get to college, and all of a sudden, like, shit goes wild, and this girl's gone wild, and they're drinking. His face is always alcoholics. red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got rosy cheeks. face is so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this kid is just doing that, like, a few years delayed now. I'm yeah. assuming he's in his early 20s, so I don't know if there, if he went to college. Maybe he, like, took online classes, was working, was still living at home. He didn't really get to live out, like, those college years, those wild years that, you, that he had. And he's doing that now. So I don't know. It's a little bit weird, but you know, I think you guys, what you said is right. Just kind of button it up, like trying to piss everybody off. But I will say as somebody who has a really annoying neighbor, and I hope he listens to this podcast, I fucking hate him. Go. 
Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. It, it actually sucks when your neighbors don't like. And now the rest of the neighborhood doesn't is fine with us. It's just our one neighbor. But it, he's in my. He lives in my head rent free because he just like fucks with us all the time. He'll like ask us about our leave situation. He'll passively aggressive text me about like you know lawn clippings being in the road and. It actually sucks when your neighbors do stuff like that because it, it actually fucks up your mind. So I will say, try not to have a shitty relationship with your neighbors because it, it's not a good thing long term. Make it important to you is what you're saying, right? Make that part of your life important to you. Yeah, I mean, like, I, and I don't feel like I'm a dick. And this guy's probably going way. This probably, you know, his neighbors probably have a justifiable reason for why they would be mad at him. But uh, try to do better because it's going to annoy you, and it's going to be. It's just not worth the hassle. How close are you to blocking this guy's number, Rudy? Um. <sighs> I thought about it. So he'll text my wife, actually, which is really annoying. Yeah, uh, big problem. Yeah. Big yeah, problem. But he doesn't like have that. my number. Um, they just, I don't know, somehow that happened. So he'll, like, just send her these passive-aggressive texts about, like I said, like, I was mowing the lawn once, and I left some lawn clippings in the street. It's not that big of a deal. The wind was blowing. It, like, rain the next day. They clear out. It's not that It's not that big of a deal. Plus, you know, we live in, like, an okay neighborhood, but it's not like, you know, you know, we're not in, like, a gated community here. It's not that big of a deal. And he'll just be like, hey, could you have your lawn guy? Uh sweep out the the clippings from the road it, it gathers near my you know near my mailbox i'm like dude you know i mow the lawn Christ. you've seen me mow the lawn don't talk who, lawn guy what are you talking i'm the lawn guy uh so i don't know just like little shit like that and he like complained about our leaves being removed too late this year it's just a million different things yeah and, those guys suck uh, honestly you, Sarudi, just, you should say something once very stern very concise because yeah. he's just gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing like i have a guy that i'm dealing with at a rental property where he was okay with me but i kind of knew his deal he kind of thought he was the sheriff of the community. And then every renter that I've had in there since has complained about him. And I haven't handled it yet. Like he messed with like a pregnant woman, you know, who was a tenant. She was the, like days away from delivering and he was telling her to move stuff. And she didn't move anything. And then he moved it on her and it was like in her way. And then I get a call and I haven't run into him since because um, I don't live there. But I, I'm... The best way to handle it is a very like once quick, like I'm not, I'm not going to be this guy for you. All right. Like, I know you think you're in charge of the fucking neighborhood and the leave removal schedule and all this stuff, but you know, it's kind of your fault, Saruti, if you don't at least once go, Hey, I get it. I'm going to do my best. We're good neighbors. We enjoy living here in the neighborhood. You're a good neighbor. I'm glad you're on everything, but don't tell me when and how I should be doing stuff. And better be a you, fucking emergency guy. <laughs> and those guys usually cower. Yeah. They do. They 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 get off on they've been around in the neighborhood. They take they, they feel like they own every unit, you know, that kind of shit. They've been there longer. They think somehow and it's like, "No, your price was for your house and my price was for my <laughs> house." That's how nice. transactions work. And those guys will push and push and push because they're usually bored. They're usually always older men. He, um, correct. Yeah. And and it's just well, however they get through their day and they let shit bother them because it's just it's just how they it's like they like it deep down. They love all of this stuff. But I'm telling you, most of those guys cower when you give them one just quick verbal gut punch and go and you can even be nice about it. Be like, yep, yep, yep. Like it's almost the setup, the setup, the setup. But here's the finisher move where it's like, you're not going to talk to me like this. I'm going to handle my property the way I need to handle it. But I appreciate your concern. But we're not talking about this anymore. And that's usually it's over. Yeah, we so. just stopped responding to him, to be honest with you. We just, Maddie doesn't respond to him. So I guess I got to I gotta be the man here and, and lay down the law. I can't wait. Saruti comes back on Friday with a black eye. <laughs> I was going to say. Fucking <laughs> 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 yeah. Guy was a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's definitely not a Marine. We'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, everybody. I, hopefully we're going to get you too aroused on a Wednesday afternoon <laughs> after life advice. <laughs> Thanks to Kyle and Steve. And uh, you can also check out Simmons and I uh, doing a full NBA and then a succession deal with the Jeremy Strong profile as well that I could talk about for hours and hours. And then Friday, we got Vilma. So we'll talk to you then. Thank you.